Boker Tov, I'm Stephen Benoon and you are watching Israeli News Live. Quite a few articles are going on that we are watching and following, including the Obama administration uh, threatening Netanyahu. There are reports that ISIS will be invading uh, Europe in the very near future and as well the armament built up by uh, the United States in Eastern Bloc, uh, former Soviet states, and Russia's concern over the matter. I'm Stephen Benoon. Let's take a look at these stories here. <clears throat> Reported in several different places. The first one I'd like to look at is the since the election of Prime Minister Netanyahu and his uh, unexpected win in Israel, the Obama administration was very quick to first reaffirm their commitment to a two-state solution as well as threatening the Prime Minister if he did not immediately and effectively go along with this plan. Uh, according to the uh, Associated Press, uh, an article called Obama Ad Admin Threatens Netanyahu with Consequences uh, it says here in Washington AP, the Obama administration uh, signaled on Wednesday it could take a tougher stance towards Benjamin Netanyahu following his decisive Israeli election victory and campaign tack to the right, saying there will be consequences for his sudden reversal on the idea of an independent Palestinian state. While senior American officials said the administration was still e evaluating options, they suggested the U.S. could ease its staunch opposition to Palestinian turning to the U.N. Security Council to create a state. Uh, there are policy ramifications for what he said, the official said, of Netanyahu's campaign rhetoric rejecting the creation of a Palestinian state. This is a position of record. <clears throat> If Netanyahu holds firm to his opposition to a two-state solution to the Middle East conflict, it could force whoever sits on the Oval Office now and in the next administration to choose between the Prime Minister and a long-standing U.S. policy with bipartisan support. Now, those of you that may be uh, aware, Netanyahu has since recanted his statement in the uh, elections, which is a shame on him. Uh, he claims that he never meant that there would not be a two-state solution. He said, but under the current situation in Israel, there could not be a two-state solution. He was clarifying his stance on that. And clearly, anyone that is agreeable to a two-state solution is in violation of the word of God of Joel 2-2 in, in dividing the land of Israel and will come under the consequences that God will have to deal with in that matter there. So whether it be the Obama administration, we know that the American people, there are many Americans that believe and love Israel and stand with Israel regardless of the consequences that she is faced with. And we know that Obama administration is not reflecting the major majority of the United States people. But nonetheless, God will not sit idle back while his land is parted and then expect nothing will come as a consequence or as, as, as a result of this action. In other news, we're also finding that the Libyan army, according to an article that uh, was first reported on Al Jazeera, a Libyan army chief warns ISIS will invade Europe. Uh, the general Kafi uh, Haftar, head of the Libyan army, uh, warned that Islamic State, ISIS, uh, terrorists running rampant into the North African state are set to infiltrate Europe and expand their reign of terror into the West, speaking about the United States. Haftar, who represented the army of Libya's government that has received international recognition uh, but has driven out the tri Tripoli by rival government backed by Islamic militants, demanded the West supply his army with weapons to stave off the extreme ISIS group in his country. ISIS will spread in the even, uh, even the European countries if the West does not offer real help to the Libyan people, he stated, especially in the Libyan army. He told the Associated Press he warned the ISIS terrorists will head with the illegal uh, migrants to Europe where corruption and destruction um, <clears throat> will spread just like in Libya. Uh, but there, there it will be hard to confront them, he warns. Uh, our, uh, his warnings are given greater weight by a video last month of ISIS terrorists vowing that their conquest in Libya will serve as a springboard for the European invasion. 
very serious things there going on. Now, uh, moving on, Moscow has uh, slammed the U.S. plans for armor deployment in Eastern Europe. In fact, the convoys have already began across Europe. We can clearly see uh, imagery, and we would like to get into those European states ourselves if, if it's possible to catch you some of that live footage as well. Uh, of U.S. military equipment crossing Europe. It's supposed to be a nine-day convoy going to different countries, but especially to Ukraine. This buildup is mainly meant for Ukraine, where uh, there is a civil war in the country. Russia is backing the eastern uh, Donbass region. And, uh, uh, of course, the NATO and its allies with the United States are backing the western part of the Ukrainians. Uh, and the Prime Minister there who, had, who overthrew the Russian uh, President of Ukraine uh, back last year in 2014. Now, <clears throat> Moscow uh, says here in their, uh, ar their particular uh, argument over this, NATO voices concern over Russian drills and increased activity near, near its border. Uh, NATO is saying this, but, but, the, but Moscow is saying that... Um, the official said a dozen public relations and communications experts, <clears throat> I'm sorry, wrong article. We have taken note of the statements of Hodges uh, that was made in Washington on March 17th. The Russian foreign ministry comment runs as follows from what he said. Now, this is uh, from Mr. Hodges out of the United States. As follows from what he said, in the near future, there will follow a buildup of U.S. forces in Eastern European countries within the framework of the Operation Atlantic Resolve. In particular, the fleet of U.S. armor, the number of both Abrams main battle tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles will be increased from 60 pieces to 220. As he dwelt on the deployment options, Hodges speculated it would be preferable to keep the vehicles in Eastern European countries on open-ended terms saying that it would be a normal state of affairs. Uh, Russia is very much opposed to this. Russia says in that connection, we would like to recall the obligations the alliance assumed under the Russian NATO founding act on the non-deployment of considerable combat forces on the perm permanent basis in territory of newly admitted members, in other words, the Eastern European countries which Hodges was referring to, according to our estimates, the case of the deployment of U.S. armor on the permanent basis on NATO's eastern flank and the mentioned amounts there will emerge solid reasons um, for calling in question the alliance's compliance with these liabilities, the Russian foreign ministry said. If a policy undermining the key provisions, they went on to say, of the Founding Act is normal state of affairs, that means that Washington openly neglects the interest of European security and the deliberately moves towards destabilization of military political situation, the commentary said. The Russian Foreign Ministry hopes that Europe does, does see the risk of unconditionally following the advice from U.S. generals and will opt for approaches that will rule out the risk of a slide uh, towards a military confrontation between Russia and NATO. So it's clear Russia is letting the West know, NATO know, that there will be a confrontation if the escalation continues. And clearly the escalation will not stop. The United States, NATO, and its allies, the Vatican, who is over all of this, is pushing for this front to be built up. There is a very much... Uh, in fact, it's very interesting because uh, the European Union also is saying that they will not live sanctions. They have implemented them to go all the way to the end of the year now. They said that they will not be lifted until there comes a complete ceasefire. Now, from what we understand, there has been a ceasefire. There was an agreement made on the 12th of February in Minsk. Uh, the eastern Ukraines have seen to, to uh, of the independent republic there, have seen to seem to be uh, trying to honor this ceasefire, and yet there is a huge military buildup. And now the Prime Minister of Ukraine, of Kiev there, is saying that they are going to take back eastern Ukraine, which means they will do it by force. Uh, the bold statements are being made because the United States is sending the military hardware and military troops along with NATO. Eleven European Union nations are sending in 
troops and weapons into Ukraine to be able to fight and take that back. Uh, this will no doubt lead to an all-out war and could spread far outside of Ukraine's borders with Russia. And it's one reason why the United States is also putting military hardware in all the former Soviet states, 120 of which have already made it to Latvia. No doubt, no reason, uh, no surprise why we see Russia has been in the uh, off, right off the uh, territorial waters of Latvia. They have already been strengthened in their, uh, their, their uh, armament from the United States and from the NATO forces. Uh, and to top it off, the European Union, and we'd seen this a little while back, but uh, the European uh, Union is now beginning to start a, its own television station uh, broadcast in Russian for, uh, to, to basically counteract, as they, as they call it, disinformation from Russian television because they know that there are a lot of Russians in the former Soviet states and with them doing a buildup there, of course, there is again a risk of another situation like in Ukraine from the Russian uh, people that are, that are part of the former Soviet states. Uh, so they're concerned about that with the Russian people that are living in the states. They have started a, a new channel um, that is being launched uh, in order to spread the word against, as they call it, Russian disinformation. The European Union is set to launch a first operation in a new propaganda war with Russia within days of EU leaders giving formal approval to the campaign to submit on Thursday. Officials said dozen public relations and communication experts would start work by the end of March in Brussels with a brief to counter what the EU says is deliberate misinformation coordinated by the Kremlin over Moscow's role and aims in Ukraine and elsewhere in Europe. It is the first stage of the plan that leaders want EU foreign policy chief Frederica uh, Mogherini to finalize by June, which may include efforts to produce and share Russian language broadcast programming, notably for ethnic Russians and ex-Soviet states. Those communities currently tune in heavily to Russian state broadcasts, which have bigger production budgets than local stations for their entertainment output as well as news. EU leaders, mostly especially in the Baltic states, have been alarmed at how Moscow has used its media to gain support for its views and policies. With budgets that are still likely to dwarf a few million euros a year that officials said the EU may provide. I'm Stephen Benoon. We are seriously watching in the developments uh, in Eastern Europe, Ukraine with Russia, the West, the United States. Uh, and, and I might say we do prefer democracy ourselves, but nonetheless, this situation is spiraling rapidly out of control. It will soon, no doubt, lead to a massive war. And we see now that Russia, uh, not only Russia, but ISIS planning to come in to attack uh, Europe as well as the West. And, uh, and we know that Russia has strong ties with Iran and Iran has strong ties with these radical Islamic groups. Nothing but chaos and mayhem in the future in Israel with the facing of a dividing the land of Israel and certainly invasions will happen there. Judgment will follow and a whole string of events serve certainly to play out. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.